Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today is a special day. Uh, it's the first first time I've seen something on a GMC truck, so it's definitely going to be a uh, special video. We have a 2025 GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate. Now I've probably filmed 20 or 30 of these Denali Ultimates over the last you know year or two, and uh, the first time I've seen this, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking. So about. here she is, uh, Denali Ultimate 2025. This is a uh, this is different because the grill, right? So you're used to this Vader chrome, which is this dark chrome color that we have on the grill and the upper part of the grill and lower part of the grill on the 2024 Denali Ultimate. It looks like it's black now. Now, I don't, don't know if this is the uh, the case with every single truck or if it's just this truck, you, maybe special edition or something like that. I'm not sure, but I think I know deep down inside why this is black. I've seen a lot of the 2024s, which is the first year of the Vader chrome peeling right here and down here so maybe gm you know took initiative and said hey this is a problem we're gonna, gonna go ahead and fix the problem now let's uh let's do gloss black on the grill outer and, and lower pieces because the denali is all chrome right here the denali ultimate was a dark chrome so it needed to have its own you know dark appearance so i guess the only way to do that correctly is to put gloss black right there they did, however, leave this, so I'm assuming that they're not having any peeling issues with this part of the grill, but still, the truck looks amazing. Uh, today, we're going to be doing a 2.5 inch Suspension Max leveling kit. It's the red torsion keys that you see in my other videos, and I believe we're doing some 35 inch Nitto Ridge Grapplers on this truck. So, a couple of the other videos I've done, you've seen me do 37 inch tires, and they do clear, but it's very, very close, and I think sometimes we have to trim just this bottom part of the valence right here. And sometimes it touches back here. Like I said, every truck is different. I don't know why one truck hits and the other truck doesn't, but that's what I'm learning. Uh, the 35's clear all the way on these trucks. So uh, that's the, what he wanted to do. He wanted to have, you know, room to flex. And if he needs to go off road or something like that, you don't have to worry about the tire touching the fender, which I totally understand. I did say in my last video that the uh, mirrors on a Denali Ultimate were black right here, and I was wrong. They're chrome too. Just something in my memory that was messed up there. Uh, truck looks uh, about the same to me overall, minus the black trim on the front grille. The interior looks about the same to me. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't know what they're gonna do to top this because it's just perfect. Have your Denali Ultimate badges here and here. And of course those, uh, those coordinates right there. I believe that's, uh, I don't even want to say it. I'm not going to say it because <laughs> I really don't know the answer. Two big screens where uh, I've noticed like Ram, uh, Ram screens are straight up and down. They're not wide like this. So uh, what do you like better, the wide screen or the uh, straight up and down, you know, Tesla style display? The uh, instrument panel looks the same back seats are uh nice this one has the uh, black suede ceiling with the sunroof in it very sharp pull this baby in and get it uh get it leveled out real quick here All right, so let me take you through the reasons why I think Suspension Max is the best torsion key for your GM 2500 truck. This is what I always recommend here at Southern Tire, and we don't have any issues with it. Uh, not to downplay any other brand, right? Rough Country, Cognito, whoever, like I said, they all make a good torsion key. But here's the reasons why I think this one's better. It's kind of tough to explain if you're new to this, but here we go. So, Suspension Max has adjustable torsion keys. Now, yes, every torsion key is adjustable, 
from any brand, but it's adjustable with the tie rod, I'm sorry, it's adjustable with the bolt on the torsion key, right? Small adjuster bolt, you go up, truck goes up, you go down, the truck goes down. Now, when you go up, it does make the ride stiffer on most trucks. Um, there's nothing really you can do about that. You can find the sweet spot in the torsion key most times. That's not so rough riding and go with that, but it also affects your alignment, your camber, your caster, and your angles of your CV axles and your control arm. So Suspension Max is a torsion key like any. Kind of looks cool. It's red. It has this adjusting gear inside that most torsion keys don't have. Most torsion keys are just this hex right here and it's fixed. So when you put this in the truck, the bolt that I was talking about earlier, you go straight up on this side or straight down and it moves this hex. That bar that connects to this is the torsion bar. It's plugged into the back of the lower control arm and that control arm moves and mimics what the torsion key does. So if you go up with the bolt, torsion key moves, control arm moves. That's your lift height in the front. What's cool about this is if you use a regular torsion key that has the hex right here, when you go up, you're just up. So when you have the torsion bar cranked at this angle, it does, it does ride rough, it rides stiff. So what's cool about Suspension Max is they have, if you look on here, you can see numbers and letters. This is coded for every specific ride height that you want your truck to be at. So you can pull this hex out and twist it and put it back in somewhere and it will, you can maybe lower the torsion key down and still have the, the control arm think it's up. It really makes the ride better. Another thing is most torsion keys have a little bit of a gap in between where the torsion bar goes into here and this hex. And that also creates a ride issue when you go over train tracks, potholes, things like that. You really feel the slop in the suspension. This tightens that all up. Now in the box with these, they also put in differential drop spacers, uh, the bolts to adjust it with, and every bit of hardware you need. And it also comes with instructions. In these instructions, you can see a cool little sticker. They actually give you a guide in here that tells you where you can pinpoint each ride height at the lowest setting on the torsion key. So that's what I always tell my, uh, my customers that come in to get these because they want the smoothest ride possible. I mean, everybody does. Everything that you need to, to put these in is in here. Uh, I really wouldn't recommend doing it without the proper tools or, or shop, you know. That's why we're here. It is a dangerous install on these if you don't have the right stuff to do it with. So uh, this is what we're gonna go with. Also, they're made in USA. That's really cool. You don't see that much these, these days. But we're gonna put these in this truck and I'll show you what it looks like when they're on the truck. So I get asked a lot of questions about tires, right? <clears throat> and I've done some comparison videos in the past, but it was only two tires. And today I wanna to show you the three different tires that I typically use on a GMC 2500 with a Suspension Max leveling kit or any leveling kit for that matter. So uh, I guess I'll go over the details and let you know and show you the differences here. All right, so what I have here for you is three different tires today. All three of these tires I do on the uh, 2500 trucks with the suspension max keys and here's the difference we'll start out with the first tire here this is the tire that we're doing on our build today that you'll see in this video 
This is the 295 6520. This is the load range E 129Q. All right, right here we have the 35 12 50 20. Probably a lot more common to see. It is the 12 ply load range F with a 125 load index. This one is a 129 load index. Then we go over to our last tire. It's our 37 12 50 20. This is the load range E 10 ply 126 load index. So I probably should have had my numbers right on this uh, before I did this part of the video, but I'm just going to kind of wing it for you. The difference is this 295 6520 is a metric tire and in small in a small little box here on the side they show this is a 35 1150 that's the outer diameter and overall width or overall diameter and overall width 35 1150 okay now we go to our 35 125020 20. obviously it's 35 inches tall 12 and a half inches wide then we go to our 37 1250 obviously 37 tall 1250 wide now all three of these tires will go on those trucks with the suspension max keys but here's the importance and a lot of people don't uh they just don't know they don't, they don't know nitto makes so many different sizes but here's the deal the higher the load index number the more weight this tire will hold a lot of people think that just because this tire on the 35 1250 is an f load range which is a 12 ply that it will hold more weight than this 295 65 20 10 ply and that is not the case. This 10 ply tire is rated for more weight. Now, typically you see a taller or a skinnier tire will hold more weight. And I don't know, I don't know really what that is in the factory, why they're doing it that way, but that's the case. This tire is TPMS compliant, which means you can air this tire up to 80 PSI, like most of these new trucks, you know, call for in the door placard, 80 PSI. So you want to have at least, you know, that 129 or at least like a 126. So you go to, uh, this 12 ply it's a 125 it's also tpms compliant but this tire holds less weight than this tire now we go over to the 37 12 50 and you see a 126 so this tire falls in the middle of those two on which on the weight that it will hold now i can go on nitto's website in a minute and probably throw the clips into the video of the exact numbers of the weight that it will hold per tire but all three of these tires are tpms compliant the difference is if you put a set of 37 12 50 20s on that truck on the factory wheel the factory 20 inch wheel at full turn and i'm talking about full u-turn you know turning this tire will rub just a little bit on the uh upper control arm and or the sway bar so that's uh still drivable you can you can still operate your truck and drive it around every day but you're just going to have to know when you're driving that truck that it does rub at full lock it doesn't do any damage but it does rub so a lot of guys just don't turn that far but that's you know that's subjective to what you want on your truck. So if that doesn't bother you, 37, 1250 is the way to go. Moving back over to the 35, 1250, this tire also clears all the way except for at full lock, it does rub as well because of the offset of that factory wheel. This does touch on the control arm just a, just a hair. Moving back over to our 295, 6520. If you notice the height of that and the 35 are the same, this tire is a little bit more narrow, so that actually clears up that rubbing on the control arm. This 295-65 will go directly on that truck with a leveling kit, no rub, no modification. So which one's for you? You're just gonna have to make that decision on your own. Uh, let me know in the comments which way you think is better, and I will uh, throw those numbers in for the, uh, the load index and the weight, and I'll uh, let you decide. So while we're still talking about the Nitto Ridge Grappler tire, one detail that I left out of the earlier clip was that this tire does come with two optional sidewalls. If you look at this side, it has this design right here on the side, which is more popular, definitely. Uh, but then the alternative is flip the tire around the other way and you get this, uh, this other design on the sidewall, which resembles more what the Nitto Trail Grappler sidewall looks like. So this is just one thing, you know, if you're the consumer and you're buying this set of tires, it's really whatever you want. If you like this side better, then we can put that side out for you. Uh, if you like this side better, we can put this side out for you. Notice on this side though, it's a little bit more of a, a flat color that's not as glossy on this side. The reason being is Nitto puts this, uh, almost like a clear coat on the tires when they're new to make this side shine a little bit more. Now, obviously in the, in the future, once they're on the truck for a little while, that, that coating wears off, but it's just something cool to think about when you put them on new 
if you want it to go ahead and shine, put this side out. Twenty twenty five GMC Denali Ultimate is ready to go. I uh, just took you through the uh, suspension max keys and the two ninety five sixty five twenty Nitto Ridge Grappler. This is a thirty five inch tire, but it's only eleven and a half inches wide, so that means that it fits and clears at full turn and full lock on this truck. Once again, I want to say I appreciate you guys for coming from so far away to get all this work done, and I appreciate you watching the channel and liking and subscribing. This is a nice, nice truck. So if you guys have any questions about this truck or this build, um, you want to know a price on the tires or the torsion keys or anything like that, just give me a call. My number is 678-994-9180. We're at Southern Tire in McDonough, Georgia. There's your uh, 295-6520 Nitto Ridge Grappler. And then if you look under here, there's our Suspension Max torsion keys right there. A lot of people ask me about the angles of the truck after the uh, torsion keys. Angles of the axle still look great. And then also a lot of people ask about upper control arms. The angle of your upper control arm is still nice too. So don't stress. Don't think that you actually need to buy upper control arms. They're a nice addition for looks. But at this height, you do not need them. Thanks for watching, guys.